All right, it's a startling number. You think about it. Among Democrats, only 37 uh, percent think Joe Biden should run again for election. They're looking, that is, almost two out of three for somebody else, not him. Marianne Williamson wants to be that somebody else. She's back in the race to challenge Joe Biden. Back when she ran uh, in the last contest, it was a crowded field. Only the two of them right now, as things stand, we assume the president's going to run for re-election. Marianne Williamson, kind enough to join us now. Ms. Williamson, good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Why are you doing this? I'm doing this because I think there are some things we need to talk about in this country and we need to change. People need health care. People need a way to get educated, to send their kids to college. People need a living wage. We need to save the environment for our grandchildren. Things that, you know, represent, among other things, a healthy middle class, which we had in this country in the 1970s. These things need to be put on the table and they need to represent the kind of economic U-turn uh, that uh, this country needs and that I would effectuate as president. I know Bernie Sanders is impressed with you. He says you should give it a good shot. We've heard very little from anyone else. In fact, nothing. <laughs> it's almost like crickets from everyone else in your party, even the progressive wing that supposedly you would, you would appeal to, certainly more than the president. What do you say? Well, you know, there's this decision made. It's um, we will not primary Biden. And so everybody who's thinking only about their own career, they're just standing in line and waiting because that's the decision made from on high. I believe in democracy. I believe in elections. I believe in anyone who feels moved uh, to run for president, putting their ideas out there, submitting their resume, as it were, and their agenda to the American people, and then let the primary voters decide. That's what democracy should mean. Yeah. Do you want to debate the president? Absolutely, I want to debate the president, and I think that he should debate me, given the fact that I am another candidate. All right. You're the I'm, only the, one I'm the declared one, actually. All right. You're the only one for the time being here. Do you think others will enter? Because no one seems to be, even with that disaffection for the president among the <clears> base, <throat> to, to jump in. It's a very serious decision whether or not to run for president, and I respect that. And I'm sure a lot of people are thinking very deeply about their own you know, they're thinking about their careers because they're part of the political machinery. I'm not. So I don't have to worry about any of those things like, what will this mean for my future political career? I think there might be some other people from outside that political machine who jump in. That's, to me, the sort of glory of democracy, that anybody should be out there who feels moved to be out there and give their case, put their piece to the American people. You know, I, I, the last time you were running, you were talking about love and, you know, the idea of decency and look after your fellow man. I'm, 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 I'm kind of conflating it all. I apologize for that. But mm -hmm. now there are reports in Politico that you don't practice necessarily what you preach, that you, there are allegations you've been very mean, uh, condescending, uh, actually cruel to staff members, uh, that you have a long history of yelling and screaming at them. They're afraid mm -hmm. of you. What, what do you say? This is what they do. This is what they do. These are the hits that they make. Hit pieces come. Uh, mockery from the uh, uh, press secretary to the president comes. Uh, women on the view. These are the dirty tricks that mean you're rattling someone. Somebody's not happy that you're there. Somebody feels threatened by the conversation that you're bringing up. So this is what happens in politics. And I'm no, not no, I, I, I certainly understand me. that. But they do yeah. quote a few people. You're quite right. Uh, uh, you know, quite a few of these were not <clears throat> identified. Uh, but this, uh, have uh, you he, noticed that? But this poor uh, uh, Paul Hodes, the, the former congressman, mm -hmm. who had said that, yeah, uh, this is consistent with my observation, quoting him, yeah. and consistent uh, with behavior I have seen. What do you say? I could talk about Paul Hodes' behavior, but I'm not going to go there. Um, if anybody has ever felt that uh, I was not respectful to them who worked for me, then I am sorry. But I also know that this is a hit piece. I think any time that somebody criticizes you, you always have to ask yourself, is any of it true? Is 10 percent of it true? If 10 percent of it is true, then I want to correct that within myself and within my behavior. But that's not what's going on here. Do I have some things to learn from any experience, including that one? Absolutely. But I also think that people can see through the obvious game that's being played here by establishment forces who don't want me in the game. Um, some people put it out there, including the White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, uh, who, who made a number of snide references about you. I just want you to respond yeah. to this. Is the president uh, annoyed, frustrated uh, with Marion Williamson for jumping in the race ahead of him? Did he want a clear field to run uh, against the Republican nominee in 2024? Just not tracking that. I mean, if I had a, a uh, what is it called, a little 
a little globe here, crystal wall. crystal wall, than I can tell you. But I, I <laughs> imagine eight ball, whatever. If I could feel her aura, I, I just, I just don't have it. I just don't have anything to share on that. What did you think of that? What I thought of that is, first of all, she's not tracking that. My, you know what? She's not tracking that. Obviously, she is. Those were not spontaneous remarks. I've written 15 books. I've given thousands of lectures. No one will see anywhere that I have said or written anything about crystal balls or about auras. I write books about religious spiritual themes at the heart of all the great religious uh, uh, teachings of the world. And I think, given the uh, deep religiosity and spirituality of the majority of Americans, you might want to be careful mocking that. You know, um, I, I agree there. I mean, uh, you, you're very profound. A, a politics of love comes to mind where you raise issues that maybe a lot of candidates, a lot of people in general, don't share during a campaign. But the, the idea when you ran last time is that you were caught off, off guard, that you were flippant, that you're making up for it now by really getting in, in, down and studying a lot of these issues. Uh, do you regret the way things started in that last campaign? <clears throat> Well, I think the, the issue that, that you bring up, the point is what you just said, when they started. I think uh, when people actually came to hear me speak last time, I wasn't, I mean, I was speaking about serious issues then. But because, you know, the debates were kind of early, I was nervous. I made a couple of, you know, I, I gave ammunition to those who wanted to oppose me by sounding kind of silly with a couple of things I said. Although I also said some very serious things in those debates uh, about all kinds of issues as well. But when people actually came to hear me, the, the issue was take something silly that she said, use it to create fairy dust so people won't even come hear her. But if you look at my website from last time and you look at my actual uh, talks last time, I was talking about serious issues then. Now I think people are hearing me. Uh, that's the main difference. Because to be honest with you, Neil, I'm not talking any more seriously now than I was talking then. I was just seen in certain situations early in the debate, all of that. You know, they'll take one viral moment when yeah. you go cringe, and, they, they, and then that turns a lot of people. It's so a you, deflection well, uh, you're probably going to get a lot more scrutiny as a result because clearly you yeah. are preparing for this very differently. But, uh, but you know, you are an unabashed and unapologetic progressive. You are looking yeah. for a single payer health care system, paid leave, parental leave, free child care, tuition free uh, public and vocational schooling, uh, a trillion dollar in reparations to black Americans. How, how are you going to pay for all of that? Well, you know, it's interesting. Right now, take something like health care alone. Uh, University of uh, Massachusetts at Amherst has just come up with a study that says over the next 10 years, it would actually save us $5 trillion to have Medicare for all. We now pay about roughly 18.3 percent of our GDP goes into health care. If you look at countries that actually have universal health care, which is every other advanced democracy, look at Germany, look at Canada, maybe 10 percent, maybe 15. The question is, how do we not afford to? Look at what we are paying in health care now. We have an $88 billion dollar medical debt. One in four Americans are living with medical debt. 68,000 people every year no, dying no, for lack right of health care. you're quite right about all of that, but it's the idea so of paying means... for it up front to get going, right? I mean, do you want to tax the rich? Do you want to no, uh, uh, surcharges? How are you going to... Because that's just part of it. There's a lot more. I mean, what do you do? Well, first of all, we spent trillions of dollars in Afghanistan and, and um, Iraq, which were obviously spectacular failures. And the first question people were asking was not, how are you going to pay for it? We, yes, we should have a fairer taxation, particularly for the very, very rich. We should get rid of these corporate subsidies. What is a we fairer have a taxation? Very no, I'm sorry, Ms. Williams. What is a fairer taxation? <laughs> okay. what's, a fair, we, in, what's a fair amount for the rich to okay. pay? Two thousand. I, I would not have a problem with the wealth tax. I would not have a problem. If you have people, if you have $50 million in the bank, I don't have a problem with you paying 2% two, two, uh, extra in tax. I don't under, uh, have a problem with that. And if you have a billion dollars in asset and we ask for 1% on top of that, that's not even going to affect your day. So, you know, we had a 2017 tax cut, $2 trillion, 83 cents went to the highest earners and the richest corporations. Why is it, Neil? But that every, we should... everyone got that tax. Right, right? Everyone yeah, got well, that. Now, now, the, now, are you? It, are, okay. The president no, wait limits a minute, wait, it. Wait, I'm sorry. I just want to be clear. I want to limit the 400,000 and over group. That's <clears> that the president says uh, he's targeting. Anyone beneath that, below that, will not have to worry about paying a penny more in tax. How do he's you right. feel about that? 
I feel he's absolutely right. Nobody, nobody. The middle class tax cut, in the 2017 tax cut, the middle class tax cut was a good idea. So while I would wish to repeal the tax cut on the highest earners, the middle class tax then cut was a good idea. Differ, and the then middle, how do you differ <coughs> from President Biden, the man you're trying to topple for the nomination? Okay. What, what is the, he saying that, that you are not, or want to do that okay. he's not doing? Okay. The president approved yesterday the Willow Project, which is a massive fossil fuel extraction plan in uh, Alaska. I would cancel that the first day. I want universal health care, like in every other advanced democracy, and the president has said that he would veto a Medicare for all bill if it came to his desk. The president has said that uh, he wants to uh, make pharmaceutical uh, make pharmaceutical drugs cheaper, a few of them. Like I said, I want universal health care. I want actually what the have, they have in every other advanced democracy, whether it has to do with universal health care, paid family leave, I want to raise the minimum wage. You have one So you want to go American further workers. than this president did, even as a vice president working with Barack Obama on, uh, uh, on, on so-called Obamacare. You want to go way beyond that, correct? I want universal health care like they have in every other advanced democracy. You don't have people die. You look at insulin alone. Look at how many millions of Americans are rationing their insulin. 18 million Americans cannot afford to fulfill the prescriptions that their doctors give to them. You don't have this happening in other advanced democracies. I understand. Democracies. So, uh, you know, you're going to hear critics who are saying you're going to break the bank. We have huge deficits, debt that's piling up. We're in the middle of a fiscal crunch as we speak, banks are in great disarray, and mm -hmm. you're going to tax it all the more. They say, yet you know bad what I'm going to do? What do you say? Oh, my my uh, response to that is that there are equally legitimate arguments that say, if people have universal health care, if people can go to college, if we get rid of these college loan debts, if we have a higher minimum wage, this will actually stimulate the economy. There is just as good an argument that this will stimulate the economy. So this austerity way of just making it easier right. for those who already have to get more and harder for everybody else to even make it is not giving us the thriving economy that some of them would like to uh, make us believe. The, right. Amer the American people know better. The visceral experience of the American people is that 80 percent of Americans are struggling to hold on. All right. We'll watch it very closely. You do bear watching. Mary Ann Williamson, thank you very, thank very you. much. The Democratic for candidate me. for president taking on uh, the president himself. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.